Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video. And once again, it is Friday night, the most popular night in America and probably in a lot of the world to go out, party, and hang out with the coolest people you know. And that's why we're here in my office on the internet playing War of the Visions because there's literally nowhere else better you could be. Now, this is week three of the Kiwi Cup tonight, the last week before the Kiwi Cup draft begins. It is MR only. You can run mono element teams there's no cost limit the only rule is you have to play mr or lower rarity units you want to sneak an sr unit in there a normal unit in there you can i'm not sure it's a great idea but you can and so we should see some spicy team comps tonight um i've been told that wind veritas's tmr might be a little overpowered in an mr or only setting and there's our first cast of that right there so canceling um ap restore yeah i mean for mr units that's probably going to do them some dirtiness right there. All right, Rising Destruction from Comroll is going to be our first attack of the day. Etra with gloves as big as she is, not quite in range to follow that up. We'll give herself the Beach Guard TMR buff. And Seymour is going to be ready for the counterattack. This is a Katana team coming out right here from Francesca versus a Strike team. So we see Katana versus Strike right off the bat. Lissette's going to go Invitation to Despair, give herself that buff and move into position to do a little fighting. Dia still kind of far away from the fight, going to give herself that re-raise and area of attack buff pretty strong and now it's sir o dr Diggs. what happened to you my friend here is sir o in friday night fights kongu comes out a little bit of damage across the team a little bit of elemental disadvantage right there for sir o for sure and then rise oh the evade comes through comrel's attack gets dodged by both sir o and by um you know the the fire boy right there whose name i already said once but have already forgotten it's going to be a theme tonight okay anyway here's dia enhancer slash comes out 5200 damage on Comroll and Lissette is going to look for the counterattack. Stun Blade comes out. No stun right there onto Seymour. That's his name. And then, ooh, Comroll's going to live by like two health or something like that. There's a sliver next to his health bar. Dia could probably just run over to him and execute him with an auto. That's what she's going to do. It pops his courage, but by moving there, I think she's blocked Suro from being able to hit him. So he's just going to have to buff. Now that evasion buff has already been clutched once. And with Comroll out of AP and only able to hit Dia, the elemental disadvantage will keep him to just a weak auto attack and now Seymour will actually execute him with an auto okay Lizette does have everybody grouped up for her. if she can find a turnaround attack here she's actually just going to shifting strike into Seymour she does make it a 1v2 instead of a 1v3 but now Sir O and Dia are going to get to chain on her a little bit uh Dia oh 1992 Dia is at an elemental disadvantage against the Lizette so let's see what she does she's ready to go this would be an this would be a pretty intense 1v3 turnaround to start the night if she can do it and she does drop Dia now Dia has re-raise so re-raise will come through Dia's back in the fight Sir O auto attack 1546 Dia with enough AP to do a big attack if she could do like a chaining attack right here or something maybe she's got a shot Water Aga Saber oh man the elemental disadvantage is dunking on Dia right now Lizette's able to take her out with an auto attack and it's Sir O versus Lizette He's going to summon the Zantetsukin right here. It's Odin coming out. Lots of legs on that horse of yours, Odin. He comes down from the sky. Big slash 2944. It's a kill. She goes down and the 1v3 is avoided. Francesca, the referee for tonight, picks up the win in our first match of the day. GG Francesca. And let's roll on to the next fight. Okay, we are instantly into our next fight, and we instantly get to see the Win Veritas TMR coming out one more time. There's a Lorelei killing a Shadow Lynx. Not sure I've ever said that before. And then there's a Lorelei reflexing. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a lot of words put together that I don't know that I've ever said before. Here's regular Dario drain evoking right there. And uh, well, there's a win for Adol. So GG, our second fight of the day. We jump in after it already started. And uh, this wind Dario Lorelei team putting the moves on some like uh, maybe Dark of A team. Not sure exactly what that team he was fighting was getting into, but we will take a chance here to look at the bracket. So here's the deal with all Friday night fights. They're all double elimination. So you can see a lot of our our first round matches are getting over and if you lose you just drop down here to losers bracket if you run to the winners bracket finals it's double elimination you'll have to get beat twice by whoever runs the lower bracket table so we got a lot of fights left to watch today as sushi beats xena and moves on to face drop star in round two let's go find our next fight right now 
All right, for our next fight, we're going to watch Sir Cuckington versus Onyx Fang, and we get to see both players flexing a tank in slot one. We've got Ravis coming through for Cuckington, maybe like a Sword Knight team. I think that'd be really cool. That's a team I like to run, and in fact, I've run it with Ravis quite a few times, although the, uh, I don't know what Sword Knight looks like at MR or lower. My Sword Knight team includes a lot of like Squall and King Bradley, and then the Marial team really heavily leading into the Magic, so uh, we'll see. We'll see. We're loading in now. And it's going to be a mono lightning team with a Salir and Shootselt. Now, Shootselt, we saw him a couple weeks ago, maybe like a month ago. And he, I thought like, man, this guy doesn't really do anything. Like, why are they bringing him along? And then I got kind of surprised because he actually showed up in a big way and put in a ton of work. So I wonder if we'll see that again today. We very well could. Ravi's at 15.9k HP. You can see why I like to use her in like cost limited night comps. She is just a thick girl to kill. And then same story with Mariel right there, right? 16k HP for her as she moved next to her Elstra and Grace. So Elstra kind of the solo carry on this mono light team from Onyx Fang. We see the Grace as a just like pure support character and then providing that nice shell buff to the group. Unfortunately, it, that'll be very effective against Salir, but less effective against Shootsel. Now, there's no elemental advantage at play in this one. Shootsel should be able to do a lot of work in this fight. He gets bells off. Mariel moves forward, nothing to do, so she'll just, you know, save a little CT and just not take action. Elstra's going to drop a Meteor on Shootsel. It does 6,300 damage, so the big carry for Kukichin's team. Taking a hit early. Ravis moves in and drops the Taunting Blade, so trying to pull a little aggro to the side. Uh, right now, she's still so close to Shootsel that he needs to just kind of move, find a place to hit. There's a Protect coming through, so that will help the tank tank some of his damage. Salir is channeling a spell. Shootsel probably looking to move forward right here and drop a big AoE attack. Let's see. He's got a 126 AP and bells ticking. No, he goes Doom Scythe and lands the Disable. So there's Shoots Out coming through with a big Disable to start the fight. And then crucially, he moves far enough away from the tank that he avoids any kind of like AOE attack from the Elstra. Mariel's disabled, so she won't be able to take action. She just moves to the back line. She will get some heals from Grace, you know, depending on casting time and how all that works out. I doubt Ravis has the damage to cut Mariel down. She's going to go with Blade Bash. Honestly, very close 3500 damage was a decent amount the 9000 point heal comes through next and then positioning again paying off for shoot cell it's going to be a meteor just on the ravis who is doing her job as a tank super well salir begins channeling a spell it shoots cell's turn let's see if what he can do to carry this fight i think mariel still has some aggro left so he's going to need to find her hazard break comes through he finds her and kills elstra that puts a that puts a big gap in this fight because now Flare's going to come through on Mariel. She should be good against magic, but Flare still did 8,600 damage. Get wrecked. Grace does have full life in her kit. She's going to start channeling it right here, but she might not get it off depending on how casting time goes and what Salir does. There's 2,300 auto attack from Ravi. Salir's going to move forward, begin channeling a spell. Full life on Mariel lands, so she's back in the fight at full HP, but no carry available for the light team, and Kaki can see is looking real good. Shootzelt probably now has access to Grace, so he goes after her with a 6,200 damage auto attack. There's Bolt Surge on nobody. Mariel's in a 1v3, and look, she might be a good MR tank, but I doubt she pulls this off. I say that. That was decent damage. She found some good damage right there, but Blade Bash will stun her, essentially sealing her fate if it wasn't already sealed. Salir, with her, you know, special lightning attack up staff in her hand, moves right. In. She goes and stares Mariel in the eyes and then starts channeling a spell. Paralyzing Edge for 7,800, Bolt Surge for 11.8k, and that's the fight. Cuckington avoids the caster curse and picks up the win. And if you've never been here for a Cuckington fight before, basically every time I cast his fights, he takes the L. This time he takes the W. GG. He moves on and let's go to our next battle. Okay, we're instantly loading in to our next match here. This is Numero 80 versus Sushi, and we get to see a Ravis casting a Saintly Wall and a Bar Blizzera from Cost Limited Superstar Valade. Now, this time Valade is up against another couple Cost Limited Superstars with King Curry and McLeod. Now, no tank on the Mono Ice team right here is an interesting choice. And then we see the Shoot Celt again with the Ravis. That could be a popular pairing tonight. Blinding Javelin on the Shoot Celt will do 5,700 damage. Damage. And Curry, remember, here's the thing with Curry. 
he has like no HP. 7,500 HP means if any of these units breathe on him, he might die, but he can do that. You see right now, Ravis has frostbite and that, oh, 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 whoa, what a, what a, she went for the charm. She walked in there and was like, hey, McLeod, you want to be my boyfriend? And he was like, no, the heck, that, no go away. So it didn't really work. Anyway, there's Barb Lazara right there. That ice resist buff will help. Maybe keep shoots out alive, but McLeod really trucked him last time. This time he's going to go barrier break lance on the tank. Still did like 6,300 damage or something like that on the tank. Shoots out goes pressure hazard, almost kills McLeod and Curry's going to get another round of attacking and he's got another AOE coming through. I bet here's a our yo know, buff uh i wanted to say buffular so i was trying to say muscular and buff at the same time anyway it's valade he's gonna drop a heal blinding cross on the whole team is really interesting right there from ravise but she's basically gonna be out of ap for the remainder of this fight mcleod at 2800 hp moves to shoot cell and kills him so 5700 damage shoot cell is out of the fight and now it's gonna be up to buff what would i call him again buffra buffles buff and muscles if you combine them you get buffles maybe that's just what we call valade now buffles anyway here's buffles he's casted a curaga or curata onto mcleod mcleod back in it and man dodging that charm is looking like the difference maker here ravi set one h one ap does an auto attack onto um buffles buffraga whatever his name is. Here's fast cast from Buffles on himself, giving himself that haste so he can get more turns off where he doesn't do anything. And now it's, um, I, I can't even remember the names for Valade that I'm, I'm just making these up as I go and I can't remember them. Anyway, another Curata comes out. We're kind of in that loop now where once Shootselt dies, the fight feels like it's kind of decided. Yeah, unless that did a ton of damage, which it did not. Okay, another auto attack for one, two, three, seven from Ravis. McLeod, 20 AP left. He goes for the Ravis with the Javelin, 3,700. Curry, 46 AP again, so he, he has some room to, uh, you know, do some moves. But he's just going to summon. That will take Ravis out, and so now it's Buffraga the third versus three people. He goes Ice Vitalization, give himself that, you know, accuracy, protect. He's feeling all buffed up but his mirror match will heal himself. Very exciting, Valade. Very exciting. Valade gameplay, guys. It's next level. Valade, the most exciting unit in War of the Visions cost limited. Just buffs for days. Okay, Curry begins channeling his spell. Speaking of Valade, he's going to uh, give himself another buff. You know, there's that Valade gameplay that we're all here for. Meanwhile, other Valade. Yep, buff. Man telling you guys next level stuff right there from Valade real crowd pleaser 6,000 damage from Curry Vol oh oh he got a CT up here he goes she's gonna kill all three of them oh no he just buffs himself and he heals himself wow all right uh McLeod kill him they're all nope couldn't quite do it Curry auto him pop there we go Valade dies and Sushi wins not on turns although had that move not killed Sushi would have won on turns either way GG all right let's go on to our next fight Okay, time for our next battle. We've got Sir McCrane with a Surges. Talk about going under the MR radar. We see a Surges coming out right here versus Sushi and his McLeod again. Now, Surges, not a character I have seen in PvP for a while. I'm actually going to pull up on my other monitor here. Look up what the thought. This is a double SR team. This is an MR. It's, it's a mono ice team. So I get what the elemental advantage of this is. But what is Surges bringing? While they're doing their buffs and things, I'm actually going to search them up on Motive Calc. What skill is he bringing that like might be great he has a move called leaping assault which he jumps does a cross shaped like damage when he lands it can slow it gives him a bunch of defense pin and rate region now i remember when surges first came out which was day one of the game a lot of people were talking about he like in theory was kind of a hard unit to kill so okay but lancers just suck like the lancer job is terrible that leaping assault move is a move that like only he has and it received an upgrade the rest of lancers bad he has cleric and paladin so i really want to see what he does i'm curious to see what this surges brings out for this fight because not a unit we see very much um i don't know i don't know 
Okay, Fairy Guard comes out. That's a TMR buff. Unit attack resist across himself and another ally. That's good. Uh, Valade, a Buffra, Buffraga the Fourth, doing his buffing thing. He gets buff in the gym. He makes his allies buff on the battlefield. What a guy. Okay, McLeod's turn next. 72 AP, 8,500 attack. He moves forward. Nothing to do. Other McLeod, 8,800 HP, 72 AP. Also nothing to do. Buff man here. He's got his stick. He's got some buffs up. I would say he had buffs up his sleeve, but he doesn't wear sleeves. Actually, whoa, a debuff. The Win Veritas TMR, which again, I, I mentioned this earlier. It was mentioned to me before this that maybe that would be worth banning in an MR or less match because of how powerful it is and in general, how not powerful MR units TP moves kind of are. And it might just really nerf the fights. Uh, so far, we have seen it a lot. I don't know if I'd say it was worth banning yet, though, but we'll see. If, like, we get to the semifinals, quarterfinals, and all of that, and then, okay, wait, was that? No, that wasn't Surges. That was McLeod. If Surges, like, drops big bang damage across everybody, I will be impressed. But he does have Frostbite, and he's just slow. SR units, man. Like, what is this guy's base agility? It's not super high. Curata on McLeod will bring him back above 50%. And McLeod with a chance to turn this fight over early. If he can find the kill on Curry and his mirror matchup right here, Surges might not have to do anything. Yeah, there it is. Neutralizing Lance. Big double kill right there. Valade's gonna go for the full life and does find it on McLeod. That keeps this a fight. Now, Surges and his Lancer job will do. There's the Leaping Assault. It did okay damage. I mean, he was full life. That did okay damage. The, the actual number was off the screen, so we couldn't see it. But that McLeod was full HP, and it took him to what? I don't know, 30%? 25%, maybe even less than that. Okay, Curata comes through McLeod back to about 95%, but now we'll get chained right here by his other McLeod, I would think, unless McLeod chooses to go for the Valade. We'll see. No, Trick Thrust comes out 9890. That'll kill him. So there we go. It is now Valade versus three. And as we learned last fight, the man might be a hero in the gym. He might be the best player in War of the Visions at getting in front of that big wall sized mirror and just being like, Dang, bro. Dang, bro. Look at my guns. Look at my guns. But he doesn't exactly bring those guns to the battlefield in any sort of um, threatening way. And now he has two people with big, long, pokey sticks that are going to stick those big, long, pokey sticks into him until he's dead. Okay, so there's one. Now, Surges with no AP because Curry dropped a frostbite on him first. Just has to go with the auto attack right there. And now watch this. Here comes a heal. Boom! Big heels, baby. Okay, McLeod gonna poke him. 3,400. Big buff man gonna do big buffing. Done. Okay, and Surges. No AP still. So he'll just uh, run to the side and poke. Wow, we're gonna get another round of that action. Here it comes. Heal. Check. Damage. Wait for it. Check. Okay, buff. Check. Damage. 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 Check. And that's the fight. Okay, Sir McCrae picks up the win. Sir Jess does get the last kill. He did stuff. He didn't do nothing. It's something. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get to see that team again here in a little bit and we'll get to see what it actually kind of does. Anyway, we'll go to the next fight right now. Okay, our next match will be Dropstar versus All Smoked Up. Now, Dropstar showing that, uh, I don't remember, but Smoked Up showing the Ravis. So we're going to see another Ravis here, and it was a Lizette in slot one for Dropstar. Now, All Smoked Up's name is Get Funded. And uh, yep, that's pretty cool too, but different names on Discord and in game. So I just have to like, yo, sort that in my head. And if you guys know my memory, it's not great. So here's Ravi. She's going to give herself Shell and Chance of Inflicting Silence. That's interesting. You don't see that buff very much. There's Crystal Grace, Haste, and AP cost down. And we get to see a couple of units right here from All Smoked Up that we don't often see. That's a Tyrell and that's a Titus. So this, I believe this is a Knight, a Sword Knight team. Ravi's Titus, and... um. 
Man, the guy, I told you my memory sucks. I literally just said that other dude's name. Anyway, it's a Sword Knight team, which is awesome. So getting those vision cards in line. Sword Knight, a very strong vision card group with like that Melnia VC in particular, just missing an AoE resist card. And if they ever catch that, this is a... Um, that that would be a very formidable job based team, but they just need one more vision card to kind of tie it all together. There's the heart of flutter, but heart of flutter. Yes, that is right. What did I say? Heart of Fluffer? That's a different thing. Taunting Blade comes out right there from Ravi's. Big damage, actually, with that elemental advantage. Onto the Tyrell. That's his name. Uh, no range right there for the strike unit. Ravi's moves in. Blade Bash does land the stun on the other Ravi's. Lizette's turn next. 55 AP. Drain Rush. Ooh, like no damage from that Drain Rush. Wow. The Ravi's is looking pretty tanky. Now, what does Titus do? Good question. No one's ever seen it. Launch. He's using his Viking sub job. Throws in axe does okay damage and now grudge blade comes through 5500 damage tyrell are you mad about venera dying in the story i uh, she no she hasn't died in the story that's not true dario dies and the game crashes okay so somebody crashed it's either me or the spectator or one of them not sure how this one will end but unfortunately we do have our first technical bug of the day so yeah, it's not gonna re it's not gonna restart. Okay, we're just gonna have to drop this one and go to the next game. I feel like the Lizette kills everybody, if I had to guess. Anyway, let's go next. All right, for our next one, we get to see Buffer Man the third versus Natasha. So we have not seen a Natasha yet today. Another MR tank, and the MR the MR cost is full of tanks there are tanks all over that so getting to see the ice tank come out here not a huge surprise ice is a very strong element in the game in general right now and in a cost limited format with you see curry and then you know big flex bro who is on both of these teams again so once again we do get to see big flex action coming into play and it'll be what it is okay here he is get ready for bar blizzara one or no, it's Ice Vitalization. Excuse me. We see Ice Vitalizations early. Here's Curry. He might, in a weird way, be in range. That would be bad for him, I feel like. Yeah, Frost Mob Barrage already coming out. He does not land a Frostbite, and that will eat up a lot of his AP. I don't know that Onyx Fangs necessarily wanted that to happen. The Raw Beast getting that early move out is a big advantage. There's Beachside Rejuvenation coming through, so a little bit of healing right there. A different bit of healing. There's Ice Vitalization, so protect on the whole team. Shoots Elts turn next. He has 53 AP. He will pop Bells. So his AP situation is fixed for the rest of this fight. Ravi's has turned 67 AP for her. We've seen her put out some decent damage today. Uh, that, that was an okay attack. Ooh, the confusion lands and then is removed by killing him. Well, it was removed and he died. Double confusion remove is bad for the person who was confused, but getting full life is good. Okay, all in all, Curry turns out on the winning side of that. Okay, Ice Vitalization comes through again, and now it's Natasha's turn. She has 16,000 HP, 65 AP, and some aggro to gain with a Taunting Blade. Decent damage, especially on the Shoot Celt, but now Robbie's and Shoot Celt will begin their counterattack. Blinding Cross comes out, kills Curry. Holy cow, that was a tank. Okay, now Shoot Celt's turn. We got a Blind Buff Man and a Pressure Hazard coming out. Buffraga is dead, and now we have a stop to Natasha. Things have gone bad for the Natasha team. She cannot move. She is stopped. And Ravis gets to pop off on her again. Blay, uh, the, yeah, the, 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 did some damage. Okay, shoots Elts turn. <laughs> what a, I can't read the words. Hard Slash comes out. 7,100 damage. Courage popped. 1 HP left. 877 damage will kill it. And numero 80 picks up the win. Was really cool to see Natasha. She needed to get out front a little bit faster right there. Curry being pulled into aggro range really killed that. Like the, the, the key thing there, and a lot of people who don't play in a lot of these things, yo, know, movement is so important in War of the Visions. And the Ravis for Numero getting out that far, Curry wasn't able to buff. So he runs out there, Frost Mob Barrages, doesn't even land a Frostbite. And then he's just like, I'm out of AP and in range for the enemy. Natasha hasn't moved out of her corner. I'm dead. So anyway, GG, let's go to the next. Okay, next up, we have a Shadow Snatcher match right here versus Smoked Up. Now, we got to see this Titus come out here and lose earlier. Maybe we'll see what the Titus and the Tyrell can do this time. 
Anyway, Shadow Snatcher that you're seeing right here, long time viewer of the channel, like long time viewer of the channel, long time fan of Friday Night Fights, getting his first Friday Night Fight action. So very excited to get him in the YouTube video today as well. Okay, forget funded, AKA all smoked up. We're gonna see that Ravise moving forward. Here's a Comrel wearing some very scary looking Wolverine type gloves, giving himself that accuracy and AOE resist buff. Okay, Titus 11.7K HP, good to go. Grievers wings buff right there. Okay, give himself that haste. That's the squall TMR. And then here's Titus. Okay, our Tyrell. Going to give the jump and move and unit attack resist buff. And those knights are moving forward. Neutralizing Lance from up on the... Whoa, excuse me. Neutralizing Lance from up on the cliff onto the Ravis for a little bit of damage. Not in range for the Lizette, so okay. And she moved down the cliff, which might give these knights a chance to do some work, but they're going to need to get in range. Comrel up next, Rising Destruction. Decent damage across the team, but nothing extra special right there. Here comes probably another Lance throw. It's Neutralizing Lance again, and it's a double kill. So, McLeod popping off, as he will do in cost-limited formats. Here comes Launch, 4,900 damage, and honestly, that's been a pretty decently strong hitting attack all night. Like, we've seen it twice, and both times it hit for about 5k, and in an MR or less fight, 5k damage is respectable, 7.1k is more, and that's what McLeod has been doing. Okay, Comrel's up next, Rising Destruction, 4.1k. Titus, you need to kill all three of them right now. You didn't do it. And now you're going to die. And I'm talking like Batman. Okay, here comes McLeod. He's going to throw a spear off this cliff. He's looking. He launches an axe, 7,600 damage. And just like my parents, Titus is killed. GG, let's go to the next fight. Okay, next up, we've got Cuckington versus Orendeer, and both of them, again, slot wanting those tanks. Ravis versus Marial. We've seen both of these tanks today. I would say so far, Ravis has been uh, the best performing tank of the night. Marial does her thing, and there's a little bit of magic on Cuckington's team right here, but uh, 2000, I don't know, Marial definitely specializes in tanking the uh, magic damage. She is effective against everybody, especially in a cost limited format. And this is a very cost limited format. Now, we're seeing some interesting things right here. We see a Vistral and a Fina. We have yet to see either of those characters tonight. So a Vistral is a thief. I don't know what he really does. Fina is somebody who I only used to play a long time ago when she had the only buff in the game that raised your faith. So she used to be before, okay. For all you uh, War of the Visions uh, Zoomers out there, you used to not be able to raise your bravery and faith in the barracks. You had to have units that could buff do it. We all got Fina for free on day one of the game. You don't get her for free anymore. She was like a special, you started the game on day one, you get a free Fina thing. And she had a buff that raised faith. So we used her for that. Her bow also charms on auto attacks. So that was something that like we've seen up here and there, but let's see what she does in this. Okay, here's Shoot Cell. He's down to 3,600 HP. He has a nice grouped up bunch of people, but he can't get in range to do any damage. So he just has to pop bells and move forward. Marial's turn next for Orendir, AKA brother of captain. Mind Crusher will pop the courage on Shoot Cell. His auto heal pops. He's back near about 80% HP. Ravis gives herself some defense and spirit. Thundaga comes out onto Fina. She tanks that okay, honestly. And now with 104 AP, she can do some things. I believe she's charging Sparkle Shower right here. Needle Toss comes through right there for Vistral. CT up Needle Toss. Okay, it did like a thousand damage. There's Banishra. It does some decent damage. And here's, oh no, she's healing. She is a support unit at heart. So she drops a big heal right there. Now, shoot cell in range of everybody. They're all grouped. I expect to see Pressure Hazard come out right here and do a bunch of damage. We shall see. Here it is. Pressure Hazard dodged by Vistral kills Fina. Interesting. The Vistral is evading a bit. And again, keep in mind, these are units MR and lower that their base stats aren't very high, which means they're not good as good at evading, but it also means they're, uh, you know, the other units aren't as good at hitting. We'll see. Vistral needs to 1v3. He's got 260 HP and he can't kill the tank. So I doubt, I don't like his chances right here, but we'll see. Okay, Salir, what are you going to do? Shoots out. What are you going to do? You going to go slap him? 
260 damage come on you're a big man with a big sword do 260 little damage to the to the thief over there with Locke's dagger in his hands where'd you get that dagger Vistral did you take that from Locke shoots out what are you actually doing paralyze the edge I believe that's a guaranteed hit move 11.9k damage and cocky tit picks up the win G G Okay, I went ahead and sat down. My legs were getting tired. It's Friday evening. I've been working all week. I'm going to take a seat in my not sponsored by Secret Labs chair here, and we're going to watch the winner's bracket semifinal. So winner of this match, guaranteed spot in the grand finals, and guaranteed to earn at least second place points as far as going towards the, um, you know, the, the draft next week or the week after, depending on how things work out. Anyway, we get to see the Surges team. Now, I've talked a little bit of trash on Surges, but this team hasn't lost. There's only one team in the whole tournament today that has not picked up one L yet, and it's this Surges team. So, let me just put my trash talking to the side, Surges, and you show me what you could do. I will say the most impressive team I've seen so far tonight has felt like a Ravi shoots out team. So we get to see the undefeated Ice Spear Boys versus the Ravi shoots out Salir team that we've seen clean up a few fights in a row. Um, let's see. So there's Saintly Wall coming out, little physical shield, solid buff. If you're running Ravish, you definitely want her doing that. And now we get McLeod, 10,000 HP, 58 AP. Last time we saw him, he was like chilling up on that ledge over there, just dropping bombs. And I think that's a great spot for him. He's not going to work his way up there this time. Here's Buffraga the fifth doing another Buffraga. Here comes Surges, 12.7k HP, man. That's an SRU at 12.7k HP. He is slow. Like, at the, oh, wait, there's his leaping strike, and it did SR level damage. That was, um, we'll say that was tanked. It was tanked. Now, he did slow the unit, so that's something. So, Ravis is slowed down. Drain Force comes out. That's a way of getting around some uh, defense and, you know, maybe other resist drain force so slash resisted defense won't tank that now there's a spear drop ravi sets 12.9k she has eaten an attack from both spear boys at this point and she has not cared surge has definitely tanks that attack better i expect a curata coming out right here from Valade, it will be a Curata and Surges is back to full HP. This is some pretty tanky team comps right here. Salir might be the least tanky person out here. She's gonna move into range and start channeling. And man, if Surges had any, uh, oh, Doom lands. Okay, now is this like Doom 64? Is it Doom 3? It's got a four on it. We'll see how good that Doom ends up being. I don't know. Uh, I doubt it comes down to that, but it would be kind of cool. And McLeod dying right there. Uh-oh, Bolt Surge. Uh-oh, Surges, you're gonna need to doom everybody. Valade, you need to full life McLeod right now. Get him back up. Nope, it's Cura, so he's gonna heal them both. Now, the doom is ticking. Well, eventually the doom is ticking. Surges has three AP. He will poke decent damage right there onto the Salir, but it's her turn next. 175 a AP. She is a mage after all. She'll be at channeling a spell. Shoots out. This will be his last big attack before he has to start regenerating AP. So let's see what he brings out. Doom Scythe. He doom Surges. He says, do you know what's better than one doom two dooms and that's the end of the fight doom had nothing to do with it but it is a win gg and the spear boys team does take a loss which puts cuckington in the winner's bracket final and I i'm i'm full of it cuckington had also never lost a match going into that one obviously that's how tournaments work if you're in the winner's bracket. But there we go. I was. It is cool to see Surges make that kind of a run. And they're not out yet, right? Just dropping down to the loser's bracket where they will get another chance to run their way back to face Cuckington again. Okay. Our next match will be Zubat, actually known as Zubat with Legs on challenge.com, the site we use to host this tournament, playing a Shadow Links versus Numero 80 with, uh, hey, look. He might not have sleeves, but he's got two big gloves and two big biceps, Valade. I make a lot of fun of Valade just because I don't love seeing him. Like, I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ban Valade. Next, I'm just gonna ban him. There's the Win Veritas TMR coming out right there from the Shadow Links as she moves forward. Shoots out will not be able to give himself bells right here if he was planning on that or any other kind of AP restoring TMR, but he will give himself his most important buff with that Courage and AP, you know, uh, HP restore when he dies. Okay, Ravi's probably gonna put her version of Saintly Wall online right here. Yep, no, she's gonna Keen Blade. Okay, so CT up move right there, trying to get a couple more buffs in from her backliners before the fight kicks off. 
sharpshoot from Curry. I feel like that's a mistake. Again, Cur when we've seen Curry lose tonight, he's been baited forward and using up his AP too early. There's a taunting spell from Leela. It'll be shoot Celt's turn next, 43 AP. He can't, again, he can't AP restore, so he just says nothing. The win Veritas TMR was very punishing right there because I imagine shoot Celt was meant to use bells and then move forward and start like, yo, know, popping off. Instead, he just moves forward and does nothing. We'll see. Shadow Leak says a shadow tether. Ooh, lands the stop. Okay, so that's good. Now, Curry gonna go sharpshoot on the back line, lands it on to the shoot Celt. So, okay, he's got 43 AP left now, 8,400 health. You gotta kill this guy basically two full times. And oh my God, speaking of killing something twice, he kills two people on the other team with one gigantic sword slash. And man, once again, and we mentioned this kind of at the beginning of the broadcast, shoot Celt came out of left field a few tournaments ago. And now he's not playing left field anymore. He's your starting pitcher. He's your shortstop. He's your batter. And he brings a big bat and he is knocking people down. Shoot Celt is a beast in this format today. MR only shoot Celt domination. Anyway, that's a win. Let's move it on to the next fight. Okay, we're jumping into our next match while they're getting their first few rounds of buffing on and Vistral's getting ready to go try to dodge something. Here's where we are in the tournament right now. We are watching this loser's bracket round five game versus brother of captain and numero 80. Two, one, two, three more wins. We'll bring you back up here to face Cuckington in the winner's bracket finals for first place. This other match going on in the background right now, we'll get the winner of both these matches on uh, on the video. And then this one, and then this one, and then that's it for tonight. So jumping back in here, we see Ravis has already taken damage. Not sure how that happened. Did, did oh, Mary all get in there? Did Fina get in there? It must have been Mary all. Anyway, we got Buffer Man 5000 here to do a little healing if he needs to, or just buff. You know, just, just drop some buffs. That's what he does. He's here to buff. Okay, Vistral's turn next. 52 AP on Vistral. He moves forward. Mug, he goes for the steal. This is PvP, Vistral. You can't steal in PvP. It's like he's there for fighting turtles, which that used to be a thing, by the way. People used to fight turtles with units that could mug. Hey, uh, our buffer boy gets taken down about 5% HP. Shoots out the most OP unit of the night. Goes for some damage. Finds it on Mariel a little bit. And then Rafis will have to auto attack. Okay, Valade, what are you going to do? You have 1,000 HP, you're going to begin channeling probably a Cura. That is a Cura. So 4,100 HP back to him. Venus turn next. She begins channeling a spell. Well, not a spell. She's a magic damage missile unit. One of the few units like that in War of the Visions. So she's going to try her thing. Banishka comes out right there. Valade down. We don't often see Valade overextending and we never see Valade or we never see Vistral killing anybody, but there it was. Okay. Fina drops a heal onto Mariel. I keep forgetting that she is like mainly a healer. Okay. Shoots L out next. 32 AP for him. Looking to turn this around. Doom Scythe. He lands the Doom, but four turns before you're doomed is an eternity. I feel like Anyway, here we go. Blinding Cross comes out. Decent damage across both of them. Auto Cure for Fina. Puts her back to full. And Mariel looks for the Banishra. It does decent damage right there, but only single target. Okay, Valade's up next. They have the Lightning team surrounded, but Valade is out of AP. Superior healing for Fina. We'll top that whole team off. Shoot Cell, you need to pop off. You've been popping off all night, but are you about to lose to a Valade? Nope. You might lose, but not to him. He's dead. Okay. Next up is Ravi. She's out of AP, so she just attacks Fina once. Mariel out of AP and has two turns left to live. 3,700 or 370 damage right there. Fina, I believe, will get baited into... Well, I don't know what Fina's going to do right here. Let's see what she's got up her sleeve. Full life on the Vistral. That's a good choice. He's got 33 AP, and he's back in this fight. Shoot Celt, you better look out. Here he comes. Snipe Dagger, 3159. Down goes Shoot Celt, and all of a sudden, it's Ravi's versus two. Auto attack will kill Fina. It's Ravi's versus two. Two. I said that before. It was, I just was predicting the future. Anyway, there's a banish onto her for 4,200 damage. Vistral, 9 AP. He doesn't have anything he can do for 9 AP. He could summon. I believe we're late enough in the fight we could see a summon, and that would probably end it, or he's going to have to look to buff himself. Based on the delay we're getting, I'm guessing we're about to see a summon come out. I'm going to take a drink while we wait. Yeah, there it is. Tetris Sylphid is the summon. So Heaven's Wind coming out right here. Man, Tetra Sulfid, not a TMR we've seen a ton. Not a summon we see very much. Anyway, here's the cast. It will do... 
1277. Not enough to kill. So Ravis will get another turn. She's going to summon. She brings out Odin. On the flip side, this is a summon that we see all the time. So Odin, what are you going to bring to this? That decent damage onto both of them. Now, Mariel will die to doom. So watch this. Here comes Mariel dying and she's dead. So it's a 1v1. Vistral versus... Okay, this is that really close. Oh, this is really close. Oh, this is really, really close. Does he dodge it? Can he dodge? If he dodges, he wins. If he doesn't, it's a Ravis 1v3. What are you going to do, Ravis? You can't summon again. Actually, this is the last turn. She has 40 HP. What is going to happen right here? Well, I don't know. The game doesn't know. What is going on? Blinding Cross kills him. He doesn't have revive. He's dead. That's the Ravis 1v3. You know, everybody knew that was going to happen. Let's be real. As soon as you saw Ravis being the only person left alive, you knew that she was beating all three of those units. We all knew it. Marial literally just died to <laughs> Doom. Doom actually did something. Wow. Okay, that was cool. GG, that was the most hype match we've seen so far today. And I think Ravis probably just earned herself a spot on the thumbnail for this video. All right, GG. Let's go to the next fight. Okay, loser's bracket semi-final. Ito versus Numero. Both players look to be running ice, and we might be seeing a whole lot of Allade for the rest of the night, and some shoot cell. That does seem to have been the dominant force. We do get to, okay, the Sorel. I'm happy to see this Sorel coming right here because, um, yeah, I like this unit a lot. When she came out, I played her a ton. Wind was kind of one of my elements back then. Cost limited units were a thing. We used to play on that like library map. If you guys know what I'm talking about, that library map to me, I believe it was called like archives will forever be Sorel's map. For no other reason than I used her a lot on that map. Uh, chat's asking me, did I get Uden Chronicles? No, is it out? My backlog of games right now is so long. I don't even know what to do with my life. But no, anyway, we got the fight going on. So Ravi, Sorel, and Keen Curry. There's Keen Blade from both teams. So both players utilizing Keen Blade. You love to see it. When one person uses it, you like to see the match evened out by another player using it. Especially when you're trying to get those buffs on so you don't run at a disadvantage against your opponent. Sorel right here, 48 AP after her first buff. Will do what with her second? Momentum. So give herself that reaction block rate and haste. Both very, very good... Um, you know, very, very good things to have. You don't want to get refect. Shadow Bind comes out. That's going to do like 700 damage. Not very much. There's AP Restore from Shoot Cell. So no win, no win Veritas TMR been casted yet by Edo's team. So AP Restore is good to go. Here comes the Taunting Blade. So only 1,000 damage, but locking in that hate for basically the remainder of the fight that she's alive. Here's a Bar Veil Blade. I can never say that one. I don't know why. Like, I don't know what that move is called. Whenever it comes up on screen, I just don't read it. Anyway, Sorrel does 3,700 damage. And now here comes the MVP of the night. The man, the myth, the buffing legend with Akira. Yeah, it's Valade. I actually hope Ito's team wins because it doesn't have Valade on it. Anyway, here's Curry. He's got 80 AP. Frost Mob Barrage on the back line did not frostbite anybody critically no frostbite right there here comes blinding cross oh my damage blinding cross just wrecking people on the enemy team ravi's down near dead and now that will kill her shoot cell just trucks him yeah shoot cell is continuing to be probably the strongest carry we've seen tonight there's ice vitalization from buff man third and 11 hp curry stands alone in his throne room with a spear through his chest Somehow still talking and walking. If you guys watched that part of the story in War of the Visions, how did that man not die? Have you seen how big the spears are in this game? And he gets one put through him and he lives. Anyway, Ravis kills him. Numero 80 will pick up the win. Shoot Cell moves on after his big damage. And Blinding Cross from Ravis is out here just dropping hammers. So GG, let's go to the loser's bracket final and then the winner's bracket final after that. Okay, loser's bracket final. We've got numero 80 versus Sir McCrane, and we see Akadia for the first time tonight. So, Sir McCrane sneaking Akadia into this last match, probably knowing that he was going to be fighting Ice, because, you know, when you've been waiting 
in the loser's bracket finals this whole time, you get the advantage of seeing what the other person has been playing. And if they've been rolling ice, you can roll in here mono wind and be like, well, 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 what do we have here? We have a Dario, we have a Kadia, and we have a Sorel. Now, will that be enough to overcome this like dominating shoots out uh, ice team? No, because shoots out ain't ice, shoots out to lightning. So is Ravi's. So the only ice unit is Valade. I'm just talking out my butt, I guess, whatever. Lightning is not countered by wind and there's shoots out buffing himself with his courage and HP recovery buff. And here comes ice vitalization from the man with forearms as big as my legs, Valade. Okay, next up is Ravi's Keen Blade. There's our Keen Blade activation. Both teams have now utilized that. There's the, it's an Earth and Dark Resist buff. So that won't do any work elemental wise against this team. Whereas that Wind Resist buff will do all kinds of work versus this Kadia team. What's Kadia gonna do? That's probably the biggest question remaining in this fight. So what does she have? Does she have damage? Does she have buffs? I mean, she technically does have both of those things, but is she going to bring any of them out in a big way in this fight? We'll see. Here's momentum from Sorel. So she gives herself that haste and you can see that puts her uh it'll it'll get her moving again before at least one member on the other team dario goes ahead generates some more hate for himself shoots out with 53 ap will get bells that's big now he will have no ap problems calamity guard okay interesting you know it that's a if you have Mashery, calamity strong guard is one of the most like op buffs in this game there's bladeville blade whatever the heck that name is and here's sorel 70 ap she's got the haste she's got a big axe and she does decent damage to the robbies like that was serious damage 5500 to the tank you'll take that all day okay kadi at 9.7k hp moves forward begins channeling a spell we don't know what the spell is yet we do know that we're going to get curata right here from Guns McGee. It's Cura, actually. That seems inefficient, but whatever. Dario at 14,000 HP. He's looking to do something. He's got uh, Draining Seal. So he's going to give himself a little more aggro with the Draining Seal. Calamity Guard on the whole team, giving that shield across the team and nullifying the status effects. Okay. Here shoots out. Now he's going to pop that shield with Pressure Hazard, but that's interesting. That shield was really effectively timed. Pressure Hazard is the hardest hitting move that this Lightning team is bringing from numero 80. So blocking it and then being hit with that tr blinding uh, cross, I, I feel like that shield probably did some work in saving at least your Sorel, who didn't move when she just did damage right there. And note, hate plus no movement means she laps everybody on the enemy team and will get to go twice before anybody else does. So 28 AP, what's she going to do? Auto attack. That kills Ravis. Ravis dead. Kadia up. But then it's Valated shoots out and everybody's still grouped. Now, will Kadia put a shield back on the whole team? If she does, I think it's enough to save Sorel, but if Katia has heals like on her kit and turned on and that support kind of AI, she'll go for it. She goes, oh, Beach Hydra Rejuvenation. Okay, she drops the TMR heal. Really nicely done. So full HP for everybody on the win team. Ice Vitalization comes out. There's that uh, protect buff right there. Hate down for Valade. Shoots out. Gonna look for the big damage. He finds it. But with them fully healed, they're all going to get a chance to kill him now. So Dario's up next. I wonder if they're baited into the Valade though. No, he hate, he hate down himself. So even if they would have done more damage on the Valade, he's dropped aggro. And that's definitely good for Sir McCrane's team. You don't want to be killing the Valade. Who cares about Valade? Courage removal was clutch. So Shootzel is killed by courage removal. And now that's probably GG. Kadi is up next. She's channeling something. It might be another heal might be another buff valade's gonna fast cast himself and he's in his forever buffing loop there's kira coming out right there from the kadia valade might stand there and keep buffing uh here we go here we go barb lazara do, 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 do. and here comes kadia again we're in a buffing and healing loop until sorel and dario decide to go kill him we'll see okay kadia what are you doing kadia listen kadia go do something we don't know uh, disrupting Axro will remove the protect. Dario's up next. Come on, Dario, do it. Big damage, Dario. End our pain. No, he's gonna give himself a magic barrier instead. Just really playing it safe. There's the, uh, Earth and Dark Veil buff. And here's a heal. Watch this. Heal. Curata on yourself. Oh, Cura. He goes for the Cura again. Now buff yourself. I would hate for you to, like, not die buffed. I mean, if anything, you're gonna be buffed. Yeah, there is the buff. Okay, good. Now... 
Arcadia buff or something. Man, these fights. If like, <laughs> come on, we know what's going to happen, right? Valade has 0% chance of turning this around. Sorel, go kill him. Oh, she only has 10 AP. She can't. Okay, she's going to just uh, Surge Strike, 2700. She's now out. There's another buff. Dario, get him. Like, Aeroraga Blade. Oh my god, it got Magic Reflex. <laughs> Pain. Pain. Okay, Valade, seven turns left. You're going to get, like, one more turn after this, maybe. He's going to heal himself. He refuses to die. I mean, I'll give it to the guy. There's some games where if you don't kill the enemy team, it's a draw. It's not how it works in War of the Visions. She got a big axe. That's right. That's what I said, Quantum. Oh, your, your brain. Don't get dirty on me, Quantum Tezzy. Don't get dirty on me. I said she got a big axe. She does. She got a big axe. Dario, kill him. Nope. Couldn't do it. Now he's going to try to heal himself. But turns are going to run out. Take that, Valade. So the Valade team finally dies to the Kadia win team. GG, Sir McCrane, going to move up to fight Cuckington for a rematch in the winner's bracket. Let's go check that out next. Okay, here we go. Winner's bracket final. Now, Cuckington has not lost a match yet. So McCrane and his Kadia going to have to pull off two wins in a row. Kadia trying to play her way onto the, um, onto the thumbnail today. So far, I think right now going into this finals, I'm leaning towards a Kadia shoots out thumbnail maybe. They've been two of the definitely most impressive units. I, I know Kadia didn't do any damage in the last fight and then at the end made us like suffer through 26 turns of Valade healing himself and her just buffing her team, but her shielding into two pressure hazards or at least one pressure hazard before a blinding or a blinding uh, cross was probably the difference in the last match. And it's probably why Sir McCrane is in this final right now at all. Okay, what's Kadi going to start this fight off with? She's going to start channeling a spell. Here's Cuckington's team. We've seen it several times. It's the Salir Shoots Out Ravis. So can Shoots Out go ahead and be that number one guy that he's been so far today? Maverick, I just saw your message. Am I able to add usernames to the units? Is that something I can do? I would love to do that. Is that an option? Oh, like if I tell you what, if I've been playing this game for four years and running Friday Night Fights for the better part of three and playing in other matches, Shoutcasting officially, and I didn't know you could put nameplates on. I'm firing myself from my other job and staying home playing video games all day. Boom. Okay, there's Magic Barrier from Dario. Kadia channeling Calamity Guard. It will unluckily only hit the Dario. Probably the least priority target for that. You want him taking a lot more damage. You, you want a shield. Okay, so if you're playing this game and you ever are getting like a shield up on your team, you really want it on your not tanks because you're anticipating a big AoE attack or an accidental mispositioning like what uh, Sorel just did. Uh, okay, she gets bailed out because Dario ended up being in range, but you want Want your other units surviving some kind of like surprise AOE or unwanted yo know, attention. There's Bedeviling Blade. My God, I said it right. Bedeviling Blade from Ravis onto the Dario. He's looking to counterattack. He's gonna fail, fall back in Draining Seal. So there's his aggro generating spell. I think Kadia will look to reshield her and himself. Now, if she does that, like if she doesn't move right here, no, she's gonna go with the Earth Dark buff. And I don't love that for her. Okay, here's Sorel. 54 AP. She's got two units standing in front of her. One of them has aggro in the Ravis. Whoa! Chill out, girl. That was huge damage from the Sorel right there. Her haste will unfortunately not put her back in front of Shootzel. So Shootzel is going to get a chance to go again. Hazard break across the back line. Here's Flare onto Sorel. What kind of damage does this do? 6,100. So she does live through it. And now it's Katia's turn. Katia probably looking for like a Cura right here or could go with the Beachside heal. She had that TMR equipped last fight, I believe. It's going to be Beachside Rejuvenation. So she full HPs herself and gets Dario back up to like 90. That feels like it GG's the fight to me. We'll see. Chicken Blade comes out. Ravis lives through that. Sorel's going to get another turn, but she already put them at low HP. 33 AP left. I think she's going to be able to find the damage to kind of ice this thing, but we'll see. There's Frost Axe. There's the damage. Now, Courage was not on. Courage removed from Shoot Cell, so he dies. Sorel also dies, though, and Dario's half HP. Okay, now, hold on. We've seen crazier 1v3s today. 
Curative Prayer on the Dario is useful. He has 83 AP and it's a Salir. You gotta feel like Dario, Katia chew through this Salir at some point, but she is a damage dealing unit. So she will look to kill people. Let's see, does she have it in her to kill this Dario? She begins channeling spell Bolt Surge, 3400. No, she doesn't. I don't think so. I don't think she has a chance. Kadi is going to back this up with too many heals, and this is going to be the shield right here. No, she does that useless buff. And the protect's not useless, so I mean, it is what it is. Okay, Dario, 63 AP. Salir, you're going to you're just, gonna just chunk her down. Chicken Blade, that's a big chunk of chunking her down. Now, Salir, do you have it in your soul to find 15,000 damage? Well, no, you don't, because there's not 15,000 damage available. Bolt Surge on it too. Hey, almost killed the Kadia. I mean, if you had an outside chance, it was that. Now, Kadia moves here, begins channeling. Dario's probably going to end the fight right now. Right now? Right now? Dario? There it is, Arrowblade, 2700 damage. Dario wins it, Sir McCrane picks up the win, but we aren't done because that win for Sir McCrane gives Kucky Kid his first loss. So we go here for the final finals, round two. Next. Okay, here we go. Grand final, finals final. And we got McCrane versus Kukikin again. We see Kadia, we see Ravise. No surprises there. The question will be, did either player make a change? Now, if you're Sir McCrane, you just won. So you have the option of just running it back, right? Not a terrible idea. Your Sorel, Dario, Kadia just won. So the emphasis is on Cuckington to make some kind of adjustment. He kept the units the same. Instead of doing something like going to the elemental bench or something like that, he said, nope, I'm gonna run the same units. I'm not gonna go look for ice or something weird like that. I'm gonna run the same units, but maybe position differently, maybe look for something like the Sorel was just crushing. So do you change some gear around? Do you turn some different skills on and off? I don't know. Let's see. It looks like the same lineup that he's been running before. So maybe just hoping that, hey, maybe he was going for like the big 3D chess play where you're like, no, they're going to anticipate I change and then they're going to change to counter my change. So I'm not going to change. So when they change, I win by not changing. Yes. I think I even said that right. Anyway, there's that earth and dark resist buff that Kadia has just loved casting all night and it is really not done that much. Okay, there's the move up from Robbie's. Here comes Sorel. I don't believe she's in range to throw an axe yet. So she's gonna go momentum. That haste buff has been nice for her so far tonight. Dario gonna be able to move forward and pull aggro here. Yeah, so draining seal comes out. Very important skill for Dario. He needs that, gives him some range, gives him a taunt that is not tied to a sub job. Nice Calamity Strong Guard buff right there, or Calamity Guard. Finds the shield on the whole team. And now it's Ravis' turn. Now, I wanna mention, this is an adjustment. It is going better for Cuckington this time. Last time, Ravis went out there and hit Shootselt, or I'm sorry, Sorel went out there and hit Shootzel and Ravis with her first big axe attack, and it trucked everybody. This time, Cuckington has gotten his team to hang back a little bit further, and so only the tank got hit, and then uh, Salir was able to come through the back and heal everybody. Dario pulling more aggro. Ravi's going to run forward here. Maybe, look, I don't think she could do, yeah, Taunting Blade's going to be, oh my gosh, Taunting Blade almost killed Sorel. Had Sorel died to Taunting Blade, it was GG. Now, let's see if Katia and Sorel have it in them to, like, change down these people or if Katia could just like look to kind of heal stabilize this fight for Sorel and see what she could do there's beach side rejuvenation so there's the heal Sorel only back to 8400 so not that full HP that she was looking at last time she started fighting these lightning fiends she moves forward there's twisting dissipator oh my dang the courage removal is has happened but so has shoot Celt's heal so he pops his heal pressure hazard on the tank and the healer now salir is going to be in charge of trying oh i think she got in range of dario that's not great for the lightning team draining seal comes out if salir is indeed just hitting dario and dario didn't just walk some like targeted aoe into salir or into sorel 
it's not good for the lightning team because that means Sorel is going to get to hit everybody with her next attack. Here it comes. This is going to be that rising axe big blaster attack. It kills Salir and it almost kills the other two. Okay, Kadi is up next. She's probably looking to heal again. And then it shoots out who's going to have to turn this thing around. He has the damage to do it. Like if he gets off a pressure hazard, he, ooh, he needs to kill Sorel. This is close, but he needs to kill Sorel, not hit Sorel and Kadia, or Dario and Kadia. It said he just kills Dario. Okay, so Sorel's, or, or the Ravis is up, just an auto attack for her. Sorel's out of AP, so all she can do is surge strike the tank, which means that Shootzel is still alive. He's gonna have to 1v2. He's got Kadia to not really worry about. She probably won't look for damage until it's time for her to summon, which you have a few turns for that. She said said's gonna heal Sorel. That might seal it because just with an auto attack, he's not gonna to be able to kill her. Let's see what he does. He moves over 3,900 damage. Had she not been healed, he would have killed her. She's going to auto attack. Can she execute him with her axe and an auto attack? Maybe. Yes, she can. Okay, that kills him. GG, Sir McRae picks up the win, making that loser's bracket run back up for the rematch in the winner's final, and then two O's Cuckington in the winner's bracket final for the win. So GG, Cuckington, congratulations on your second place, and GG, Sir McRae, congratulations on winning. Now, if you're watching this on the YouTube VOD and you would like to participate in Friday Night Fights, you can't play in the next one because the next one is a top eight draft for the winners of the Kiwi Cup. After that, we will start a brand new cup series, which you can join and try to play yourself into the top eight yourself. I said yourself a couple times. It's getting late. It's getting late. Anyway, there we go. All right. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Peace.